Good morning, friends, and welcome to morning prayer at your cathedral, St. Stephen's in Harrisburg. This week, we begin the final week of Advent, and we are so glad you have joined us. We begin with an opening sentence and then the confession. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Jubilate as our invitatory. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lambs. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore. A lesson from Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen.
reading from Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the lesson. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, there's something about Mary. There's something really remarkable about a woman who's faithful enough and strong enough and maybe daring enough to put her trust in the promise of God to do something that is basically impossible. Many of us grew up with an image of Mary, the mother of God, as a quiet and submissive woman, the lovely lady dressed in blue, meek and mild. And that's a cultural overlay. It's really a myth that conforms Miriam of Nazareth to what we might expect in a church structure that has traditionally entrusted men with power and demanded that women keep silent, which leads to a whole lot of well-intended but mm, perhaps inadequate theology, of which many Protestants are rightly critical, Mary letting her friends in the back door of heaven because they've prayed to her, and then she tells Jesus what to do. Mm, you know, passive-aggressive Mary? That's gotta be a myth. Titha Balasuriya was a Roman Catholic theologian and he was an activist in Sri Lanka. Following his book called The Eucharist and Human Liberation, which challenged, which challenged those who believe that the Holy Eucharist is the food of the Lord, um, he asked us to consider how the bread of life might actually require us to feed the one third of the world that always goes hungry. So Balasuria then wrote a book called Mary and Human Liberation. It was the first book that I borrowed from Yale Divinity School before I even went there. It's a fascinating book. And Balasuria describes Mary as a strong, mature, working class woman in the first century who raises her son as a man who is revolutionary enough to follow the will of God in a land that's being conquered by people who worship idols. In Balasuriya's context, which is a country that remains largely Muslim and Buddhist, the image of a docile Mary was used as a tool of colonial power, teaching women that holiness meant submission and invisibility. And so Balasuria pushes back against that, portraying Mary as the first disciple, the one who helps to form the mind of Jesus Christ. The hand that rocks the cradle is indeed powerful. While many of his disciples flee or deny or betray Jesus, Mary remains faithful. She is visible at the foot of the cross as her son is executed for being a troublemaker. She's a model for a mature Christian faith, which rejects oppression. Ah, yes, there is something about Mary, the real Mary, not the Mary of myth. It's easy to dismiss or underestimate the influence and power of the woman who becomes the mother of God. Let's not do that, because we're all invited to be like Mary, to listen to the call of God and to birth the Christ into a fractious and oppressive world. We are all invited to join Mary as she sings her Magnificat, 
the Song of Mary, that wonderful hymn in the Gospel of Luke that testifies to the power of God to bring about reversals of fortune in a very broken world. Mary's song is like a beautiful spiritual descant that hovers over the gritty harmony of her people's poverty, failure, and discouragement. In the shadow of danger, Mary celebrates. The Mighty One has done great things for her and for us too, raising up the lowly, offering us mercy, continuing to promise restoration and redemption. Mary's song of praise is profoundly courageous. In a season of economic and medical crises, when we are nearly crushed by anxiety of the future and looking for someone to save us, there is no one better than Mary to show us how to do what we need to do. She's a role model for those who choose to honor the holy amidst the suffering and confusion of real life. There really is something about Mary. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. This collect is for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming may find in us the mansion prepared for himself who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray for members of the Anglican community especially our own Episcopal Church. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our partners in ministry, the parishes in the Diocese of Central Pennsylvania. Christian Churches United 
who are dealing with hundreds of evictions of residents in our area, Sycamore House members, and the St. Stephen's Episcopal School, especially for the second grade class at the school and their teacher, Sarah Blackford. We pray for our parish families, Sean and Katie Grady, David and Sia Gudekinst, and their daughter, Amanata, Dr. Richard Halleck, the Reverend Canon Gary Hark, and Bonnie Luridison, Dr. Margaret Hahn, and Paul O'Connor, Steve Hunsinker, and Michelle Campbell, Stephanie Spangler, and her daughter, Ashley, Edward Copeland, Mary Grace Shear. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them. We remember those who have asked for our prayers. We pray especially for Joyce, Lenore, Nora, Barbara, Jerry, Jim, Lily, Patty, Greg, Pat, Michelle, Michaela, Cole, Connie, Jeff, Andrew, Kathy Ann, Larry, June, David, Don, Roseanne, Jennifer, Rob, Linda, Amanada, Shelley, Courtney, Karen, Makala, Matt, Steve, Bob, Bennett, Martha, Allison, Lenny, Liam, Chuck, Chris, Melissa, Jordan, John, David, Margaret, Mike, Patrick, Jan, Elise, Sarah, Helen, Janice, Judith, Nancy, Marilyn, Joan, Jacob, Bob, Sandy, Alan, Emily, John, Ishmael, Margie, and Bernice. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The communion elements are given in celebration of the 63rd anniversary of ordination to the priesthood of the Reverend Canon William F. Murphy. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We especially remember Joan Rollins and Kate Pakuda. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We conclude with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.